Good afternoon, everyone. I'm joined by the one and only Nick Luck. Nick, it's great to see you here at the Sydney Arms. Log up. We're six days out from the Cheltenham Festival. How's the excitement? Uh, it's good. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy fortnight. Um, a lot of uh, previews uh, and herring around all over the country in, in the snow and what have you last week. But no, it's been, it's been great fun. And, and I, I think, I remember 10, 12 years ago, people said, oh, these Cheltenham preview nights, they've had their day yeah. now. Uh, a dozen years on and they've bred yeah and there's there's more than you, there's more than you can possibly imagine so the appetite for it just gets more and more every year and you seem to have a great difference in some of these nights i saw you on the live stream on the bet bright night a lot of uh <laughs> yeah, tasty was... punters there giving it well, large actually they've changed a lot really because i think when i started and there are still a few that are quite traditional quite low-key not low-key but quite um quite measured and they were all a bit like that in those days now it's much more involved much more in your face uh, much more audience interaction yeah. you know, like the ones you saw on the live stream last week mm. yeah everyone wants their say everyone's getting stuck in uh, I, just culturally it's different and yeah the, the interest in Cheltenham is just a lot more sort of raw and visceral I think now than, than perhaps it was was then absolutely and Nick every time I see you you seem to be somewhere different you're in another country another <laughs> location you're rack racking up more air miles than Michael O'Leary what's the uh, fatigue like how do you handle uh, it? All right, yeah, I'm. I am. Uh, I'm not going to moan, yeah, um, Stephen, because uh, it's it's a wonderful way of life. So sure. I, I'm, you're not going to find me complaining. But yeah, yeah it's been a it's been a, an interesting few weeks. Okay, right. Let's crack on with Cheltenham. We're six days right. out. Everyone's absolutely buzzing for it. Mm -hmm. um, in general, what are you most looking forward to? What would be the race that you can't wait to see? To answer the questions in your mind, Gold Cup. I would say that nine years out of ten and I don't think this year is any different yeah. because they're probably going to bet five, two, three to one the field and um, you've got a, a sort of horse around whom the race revolves mm. and Mike Bite who is such a sort of mercurial talent that you're sort of intrigued to see what he does if and when he gets in the position to win the race yeah. so that is your starting point your point of departure your main point of interest and then a whole raft of really capable horses who probably haven't reached their full potential yet and you know can improve a little bit more and which is the coming force which is you know can last year's winner bounce back i think he can yeah, yeah i think that there's enough intrigue in that race to still make that the race of the meeting you know in the other championship races you got very short price favorites and you know i think so you can tell it's getting spicy already here this evening um but I, I still think the Gold Cup's the race that's going to that's gonna, you know, get me going. And one question here that everyone's asking, can Duvan possibly make a comeback against Altior? He can. He can. It's funny, actually, because I, there's still sort of an assumption that he might not go. But yeah. if he does go, so people have forgotten exactly how good he was. Why did he thump sizing John seven times? Sizing John's one of yes. my favourite horses in training. Incredible. I think he might win the Gold Cup again. And I know it was over shorter distances, but class tends to tends to outweigh distance in most cases and the fact that he did that to him time and time and time and time and time again yeah. tells you just how good he is you know there's this feeling that you know Altior is simply unbeatable well on recent evidence that that's the case yeah. but uh, I'm, I'm A fascinated to see if Duban runs right. B fascinated to see how he runs and C fascinated to see whether Ruby Walsh rides him Absolutely right. Let's crack on with Nick Luck's banker of the meeting. Uh, there is, there is All no, the punters at home, the pressure's is, on here, Nick. There is no banker blogger, right? but I am taking a positive view about sizing John. Okay. I, I was tweeted by people who have no name on Twitter saying, oh, he hasn't been the working usual. well, he's not this, that, blah, blah, blah. But I, the vibes I was getting from Ireland when I was there the other day was that he's in good nick. And uh, I keep looking at this weather forecast yep. over and over again. I don't think the ground's going to be too bad at all. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him go really well, really well. I do think, yeah, you know, of the shorties, of the short price horses, I, I think Atmel Shakira is actually not a bad price at all to win the Triumph Hurdle. Yeah. They'll go a good gallop and I think she'll probably win. And if you were going to lay one of these shorties as a bookie, who would you want to get beat? Well, who's vulnerable? I don't think he's vulnerable and he's clearly the likeliest winner, but I've got a hunch, which is not informed by anything particular, yeah. that the champion hurdle could just throw up a weird Ooh, result and really? I don't know how that's going to manifest itself but yeah I'd rather be backing a um, a 7 or 4 shot than a 3 to 1 shot so I'd, I'd if I was going to lay one I'd, I'd ha I would I'd suppose I'd happily lay Boobadera at 4 to 7 put it that way will you take I'm my 2 grand at 7 to 4 on? Happily. <laughs> Taking your two grand for anything. <laughs> and what about a big price sneaky outsider on one of these dirty handicaps that everyone loves? Oh, uh, well, David Jennings has, uh, has, has put this up in the Racing Post the other day, and we'd had a chat about it earlier in the week. I, I, I think the organist could run well in the Patel. Oliver Sherwoods. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since Oliver's had a Cheltenham winner, but yep. he deputy Dan ran very well from the other year. Morrison's starting to run into a bit of form. I thought 
she ran very well at Warwick mm. in the qualifier. She, tr- she it was the first time I'd seen her travel like a good horse yep. since she was a novice hurdler. And I don't think she's badly handicapped. And there's any number in that race who could run well. Louis back pouch and one or two others. But I think if you want one at a big price, I think she's she's one that could, could go pretty well. Awesome. And I presume you'll be working at the Fez for the four days with OIUK? Yep. Yeah, it's a really good team yep. uh, for Racing UK at the festival. Absolutely. Lydia, Lydia Hislop, uh, Stuart Machin, you know, outstanding operators. Uh, Tom Stanley, Rishi Passad. I think, yeah, we've got a, really, a, a whole bunch of experts who you know well. So I think we've got a really strong team. Really yep. looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, coming up.